So back at CES 2021, this was released. This is the Altel Evo Lite. And they really haven't talked much about this drone up until 2024 when they announced the brand new Enterprise versions of the Lite series. And today we're going to take a look at what's in this bag. I haven't even unboxed it. This is the Evo Lite thermal version. Let's get started. What's good, everybody? Ken here. You're watching Original Dobo. And today we're going to take a look at the brand new Evo Lite Enterprise. Pretty excited about this. This is a very small, portable thermal solution that is also very affordable. With that being said, let's just jump right into what's inside of the bag, the pouch that they ship it with. So let's go ahead and open this up. All right, so it's two sides here. Sort of show you what's going on in here. We have the drone on this side. We have a brand new RC. So let's start off with the drone. Okay, so I can tell you right out of the gate, there is no more carbon fiber on here. So it seems like the arms are plastic. Yeah, it would appear that way. Let's get these off of here. Let's go ahead and take all of the plastics off here. Oh, all right, we'll come back to that one. That one's coming off a little hard. Now, I will be doing a two-part series on this. For this series, I just want to go ahead and unbox it, talk about the hardware a little bit, take a look at things, get everything set up, and then we'll do a first flight with this. And we'll probably do it in the evening time so we can test out this thermal capability. Now, really quickly, this thermal sensor is the same that's on other Altel drones. This is a 640 by 512. You're going to find this same sensor on the Mavic series as well. So looking over the hardware, there's really nothing special. It is the same as it is on the Evo Lite series. And I think, I st let's just go ahead and just compare that. Ultimately, it's still the same. We still have the same sensors, the same light, pretty much everything from what I can see, even down to obstacle avoidance and batteries are identical. Yeah, everything's the same except for the arms are not carbon fiber. Or are they not carbon fiber? Maybe they are and they're just finished. Hard to really say because I'm seeing, it's hard to see, maybe you can see on the camera, but it does look like there is carbon fiber, but it looks like it may be finished. Really hard to tell. Wouldn't know unless I really took this apart closer, but the surface level, it doesn't seem to be that unfinished carbon fiber that is on the, uh, the consumer version. So sort of interesting. Let's go ahead and take the gimbal guard off, get the rest of these plastics out of the way. And we can take a look at that sensor. It's right there, that's the thermal sensor. Also has an RGB sensor there as well, so pretty nice. Very small, very compact. So this should be uh, pretty neat to test. Batteries are the same as the previous generation, so you should be able to hot swap these batteries around from, well, I shouldn't say hot swap. You'll be able to use this battery on the consumer version, vice versa, you'll be able to use the consumer version on the Enterprise. So that is nice that the batteries are able to be interchanged. Let's keep uh, looking at what comes in the box here. So for the first time on the light series, we now get the new RC. This is the RC. This is the th version three of their smart controller. Uh, it's version three. It's not going to be backwards compatible with the other uh, light series. So if you were hoping that you can use this on a light, you will not be able to. This only will work with the enterprise versions. So this means it has the new chipsets. Altel has a really bad habit of doing that. It seems like every drone has a particular RC or improvement for one reason or another. So um, it's sort of unfortunate. I wish it was more like DJI where they were more intermingle, mingled, intermingled, but they're not. So that leaves a bad taste in people's mouths often, but Ultimately, it's still the same. Let's see, we got the sticks in here. Yep, sticks are on the back side here. So let's go ahead and put the sticks in. Put stick one in, and then there's a holder right here for the other stick. So pretty much the same as the SE version from what I'm seeing here, other than the fact that this is going to have all of the enterprise software loaded on here. There is also a kickstand here. So you can sit it down, see if I can pull it. There it is, so metal kickstand. So you can sort of set it down like that. Uh, let's go ahead and power this on. Let's see how does it power on. There's the power button. Let's see if there's any juice in it. There is juice, so it does have a charge already. 
So we'll let this power on and then we'll turn on. That's interesting, UAV. I don't know if you see that. It doesn't even say Altel, it just says UAV. Interesting. It's almost like white labeled. So we'll let that load. Get rid of all this plastic over here. Interesting. So there's there's a lot of really unique settings on here. I could probably make a whole video talking about Altel's enterprise software. Yeah, I know it's got to be calibrated. So still have recog recognition. So let's see if this will recognize me. So it does recognize me. I will say the lag or the delay is a little weird here. Not really sure what's going on here. I still have me on the screen. Maybe it's because I'm so close, but uh, I'm getting a little bit of a delay. Probably going to have to uh, reboot this here in a second, see if that clears that up. Um, yeah, there it goes. So looks like it cleared that up. It seemed like it locked up when I tapped on that recognition. Now, maybe that's something firmware will fix. I'm not really 100% sure, but that's why we like to break this out into two different types of flights. So right now it's staring back at the camera here. And of course we can change this over. We can change the different modes. So we have remote ID obviously on here and we'll switch over to the wide. So that's the wide sensor, not terrible. Let's see what the latency is. Latency is pretty normal for an Altel aircraft from what I can see. Let's see about the IR latency. IR latency is about the same as RGB latency, so that's good. So latency-wise, we'll have to test that when we're in the field. That is one of the things I'm very critical on when it comes to Altel. Let's just take a look at some of the camera sensor options we have. So we have 12 megapixel stills. We have 48 megapixel stills. You only get JPEG, you do not get the option to do RAW. Again, this is a whole different ball game when we're talking about enterprise. When we flip over to the video, uh, video resolution, we have frame rates up to 30 frames per second. You can shoot in H.265 or H.264, MOV or uh, MP4. Um, it is not letting me make any other changes to the resolution. I don't know if you can see this here on the screen, but there is no other options for changing anything as far as resolution goes. Uh, when we come over to the IR, we do have 640 by 512 as a resolution. Again, JPEG is the option. You have the option to turn on radiometric information as well. So if we turn this on, we can get data and you can have uh, image enhancements 1 through 10. So that is good to see that that is here. So this is radiometric for those of you that were wondering. All right, so let's get away from that. Let's go into the more section here. Um, so we have information sharing, so you can share the RC display uh, live, so it can actually be picked up wirelessly if that's something you're interested in. Um, and then they have a bunch of interesting features like stealth mode, tripod mode. Um, they have different missions pre-planned in here as well. So that's good to see that there's options like this available. What I'm going to try to do now is I want to go into the settings on the RC. I want to take a look uh, at the wireless settings here because there is options when it comes to remote ID, or at least the last time I saw it, let me go on their settings here and see. So you can set your altitude limit. Again, there is no, uh, no restrictions, no flight restrictions on this particular aircraft, no distance restrictions or anything like that. Uh, let's see, it's not really giving me any other options. You have your compass calibration, your signal, it's not letting me see anything else as far as that goes. Let's see. Uh, RC. Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. Transmission. So transmission-wise, you just have 2.4, and then you have an option to choose smooth or HD, so nothing really critical there. Battery options, pretty normal. Gimbal options, pretty normal. Let's go under the safety options. That's usually where what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the remote ID options. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, let's see about. Nope, not seeing it under there. Target recognition. We have human vehicle boat safety. No, I'm not seeing anything for remote ID under there. Maybe I'm missing it. 
So those are here. And again, you also have that ability to go split screen. It's very intuitive and easy to navigate on the screen. I mean, if you've never flown uh, an aircraft like this before or have had any experience when it comes to an enterprise aircraft, you'll be happy to know that this is very, very easy to navigate. I really do appreciate that. Uh, and then of course you can expand one or the other. So let's say I wanna go back to my, just my RGB, I can expand that. It's just super intuitive. I think that the Altel Enterprise app, in my opinion, is a little bit easier to navigate than the DJI Enterprise. I don't know why it feels that way, but I just like the layout of it and I do like this new RC. We'll have to see how well this RC does when it comes to battery life. Up here at the top though, we do have some outputs here. You do have external storage and you can run another uh, USB-A out. Um, looking for HDMI, although with with the ability with most uh, most computers now, you can run HDMI straight out of a USB-C port, so maybe that's what they're doing here with this. I'll have to test that further to let you know. I'll even have to test those glasses that we have with this to see if we can get an HDMI feed out of this RC into the glasses. That might be very helpful for many as well. But overall, pretty impressed uh, with, the, with the little build quality. This is right now the most affordable thermal camera option on the market right now. It comes in just under $3,500. Uh, the Mavic 3T, I think, is just a bit over that. I think it's like at $3,999. And if you're thinking about Anzu, you're looking closer to like $5,400 due to the licensing agreements that they have to uphold. But if you're wanting something with thermal capabilities that's small, but also doesn't have flight restrictions, this is probably going to be the best way to go. All right, so that's the Evo Enterprise Lite thermal variant. If you're interested in picking up one of these for yourself, there will be a link in the description below where you can check it out. I will have a full flight review as soon as I update all the firmware and make sure everything's good to go along with charging the batteries. So be sure you are subscribed so you don't miss that. And if you have any questions about this drone or you wanna know something specifically about it, be sure you drop a comment and I'll try to get back to you just as soon as I can. All right, that's gonna do it. I will see you in the next video. And as always, stay original. I heard they checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message, homie, ain't no flexing on me, my attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessings for me, my success is only made them envious, they got upset. I had to put on they...